Dear students, now we are going to solve important problem using overlap save method. The given problem is to find the output of the filter whose input signal x of n is equal to it's a long duration sequence and impulse signal as h of n is equal to 1 1 2 1. So now we are going to find out the output of this filter using overlap save method. Let's solve this problem. From the given data we come to know that the length of the input signal x of n is equal to 14. There are 14 samples. Okay, It's a long duration sequence. So there are 14 samples and the length of the impulse signal as 4. So here we are going to use overlap save method to find the output of this filter. So here the very first step in overlap save method is to divide the given long duration input sequence into short duration sequence. That is the input sequence is divided into blocks of data with length L plus M minus 1. Here M represents the length of the impulse signal. So M minus 1 means it is 3. 4 minus 1 it is 3. So here this L represents the number of data taken from the input sequence. The given input sequence to form the block. Okay. So you can understand over here. And this value we can assume as 2. So this L we are going to assume. Okay. So if this M minus 1 value is equal to 3. Then we can take this L is equal to 2. Because we have to divide or we have to create a block with the maximum length of 5. Then only we can obtain the accurate result. Next we are going to write the given input sequence as such. There are 14 data values. So next we are going to divide this input sequence into blocks of data with size 5. So for the first block of data, the first m minus 1 points are set to 0. So here m minus 1 means 3. So 3 zeros are set here for the first data block and the remaining 2 datas are taken from the input sequence. So here it is 1 minus 1. So first two data points we can take it for this first sequence. Okay. So x1 of n is equal to 0 0 0 1 minus 1. Okay. So the next data block. So here x2 of n can be formed by taking m minus 1 data points from the previous data sequence. So here it is 0, 1, minus 1. So for the next block, we have to take this last three data points as a first one. So we can take this, okay. You have to remember this for the first sequence alone, you can take m minus 1, zeros. From the next uh, sequence onwards, you have to take m minus 1 data points from the previous one and the remaining two data from the input sequence okay so here 0 1 minus 1 and the next two data are taken from this input sequence so it is 1 comma 2 it's a new data from the input sequence so next x3 of n so x3 of n means here we can take this three data minus 1 1 2 and this two are the new data from this data sequence okay so 1 0 next x4 of n then we have to take this three bits. Okay. So 2, 1, 0 and the last two here it is from data point. Okay. So 1 comma minus 4. Similarly, we can form x5 of n, x6 of n, x7 of n, x8 of n. So we can take 2, 2 likewise. Here it is 2, here it is 2 and then 2 and finally this 2. So in this x7 of n, you come to know that. 2, 1, 0. That is this 3 data points. Correct. So we can take it here and this 2 are new. Correct. New data from the given data sequence. This 2 are the last data. Correct. So from the given data 1 comma 1 is the last two, two data. Right. So for this next 
we can take this three bits 0 1 1 so x 8 of n is equal to 0 1 1 the remaining terms we can put 0 0 because we have included all the new data from the input data sequence so we can simply say 0 0 but in the last three sequences or then the last three places there is a value 1 so for this one we can create one more data block so we can write 1 0 0 finally 0 0 now this three sequences or the samples are 0 only so we can stop at that point after dividing the long duration input sequence into blocks of data, the next step is to find the circular convolution for each data block with an impulse response. So now we are going to find out the response of each data block. So y1 of n is equal to x1 of n circular convolution with h of n. So here in case of circular convolution, we have to ensure that the size of both the sequences are same. But here in this problem they have given h of n is equal to 4. Here x1 of n is equal to 5. The number of samples. So for that we have to add 1 0 in this impulse response. Okay. Actually impulse response is 1 1 2 1 alone. For making the size as 5 we have to add 1 0 here. Is that okay? So next we are going to find out the circular convolution for these two sequences. So here we are going to use matrix multiplication method. So for that method we can take h of n in matrix form. Here it is n by n matrix multiplied with x1 of n matrix. It is a row matrix sorry column matrix that is equal to y1 of n. So here you can take this h of n like this. You have to remember always for this overlap save method you can take h of n because this value is standard. h of n is standard. This x1 of n, x2 of n, this values can be changed for next sequences. Okay. So, we can write h of n. So, this is the format as you all know that 1 that is the first value of this h of n. The remaining values we can write it in the reverse order. So, first value we can write as h and the remaining values we can write it in the reverse order. So, 1. 0, 1, 2, 1. That is the first row. Correct? We have already discussed this matrix multiplication method in the previous lecture video. You can refer that video for further clarification. Okay? For the second row, we have to make a circular shift. So, the second row can be written like this. This one come here. Okay? Then this one comes to the first position. So, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2. Then 2, 1, 1, 0, 1. Then 1, 2, 1, 1, 0. Then 0, 1, 2, 1, 1. And that is multiplied with this x1 of n. So x1 of n is 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1. As you all know that the first three values are 0 here. Right? The same concept row with column multiplication. Okay. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 minus 1. Okay. So likewise we can multiply this matrix method and finally we can get y1 of n is equal to here it is 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 0 okay this is y1 of n similarly we can get y2 of n y2 of n is equal to x2 of n circular convolution with h of n again here we can use matrix multiplication method h of n x2 of n is equal to y2 of n correct so as I told you earlier, you can keep this h of n as such for all the output sequences. So we can write the h of n matrix as such and we can write the x2 of n 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 2. Then we can obtain the y2 of n value as 3, 6, 2, 2, 2. Correct? So this is the y2 of n we are going to find out y3 of n is equal to x3 of n circular convolution with h of n. So this is what x3 of n this is h of n. Again matrix multiplication method here h of n this x3 of n is what minus 1 1 2 1 0. For this matrix multiplication we get the answer as y3 of n is equal to 4 1 1 4 6. Okay. So next y4 of n is equal to x4 of n circular convolution with h of n here it is x4 of n values uh, values what 
टू वन जीरो वन माइनस फोर हेच ऑफ एन एस कॉमन सो वी कैन टेक द मैट्रिक्स मल्टीप्लीकेशन एंड देन गेट द आंसर एस वाई फोर ऑफ एन एस इक्वल टू जीरो माइनस फोर वन फाइव माइनस टू सो देन वाई फाइव ऑफ एन इज इक्वल टू एक्स फाइव ऑफ एन सर्कुलर कन्वोल्यूशन विथ हेच ऑफ एन सो हियर एक्स फाइव ऑफ एन वैल्यू इज वॉट जीरो वन माइनस फोर थ्री टू ओके हेच ऑफ एन एस कॉमन देन वी कैन गेट वाई फाइव ऑफ एन एस इक्वल टू फोर एट माइनस वन वन माइनस टू सो नेक्स्ट वन एस वाई सिक्स ऑफ एन सो हियर एक्स सिक्स ऑफ एन सर्कुलर कन्वोल्यूशन विथ हेच ऑफ एन सो एक्स सिक्स ऑफ एन एस वॉट माइनस फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो फॉर दिस एक्स सिक्स ऑफ एन द कन्वोल्यूटेड वैल्यू एस वाई सिक्स ऑफ एन एस इक्वल टू जीरो जीरो माइनस थ्री फाइव एट so the same way we can find out the values of y7 of n and y8 of n okay that is the output for the sequences okay then we can take the circular convolution for the last sequence x9 of n so y9 of n is equal to x9 of n circular convolution with h of n so here x9 of n is equal to what 10000 here it is H of n one one two one zero. Again, the matrix multiplication method. Here we can get the y nine of n is equal to one one two one zero. Okay. So here we have obtained the responses for each data blocks. The last step in this overlap save method is to discard m minus one data points from each output blocks. So in the first input sequence, we have set m minus one zeros. From second sequence onwards, we have taken m minus one data points from the previous data blocks, right? So it may create some corruption in the output side. In order to get the original output blocks, we have to discard m minus one data from each output block. Okay, so here we are going to discard m minus one data points. So for that, first we have to write all the output block of data. So output block of data here it is y of y one of n is equal to one minus one minus one one zero. Y two of n is equal to three six two two two. Y three of n is equal to four one 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 four six. Sorry. Likewise, we have to write all output sequences here. After writing the output sequences, we have to discard m minus one data points. Here, m minus one means three, so we can discard all this first three data, and then combine the remaining data. So we can start with this one zero two two four six. So we can write the final answer as one zero two two four six. Then five minus two. Five minus two, then one comma minus two, five comma eight, five comma three, three comma three, one comma zero. This is the answer for this problem. Okay.